In this lecture, we will discuss acute myocardial infarction, including its pathophysiology, diagnostic criteria, and factors that can influence its size and course. Acute myocardial infarction, which may be simply referred to as AMI at times, is considered the most severe complication of coronary artery disease. If you recall, an atherosclerotic plaque develops within a coronary artery. At the core of that plaque, there are inflammatory cells and lipids, which drive chronic inflammation within the arterial wall. Eventually, that plaque becomes unstable and may rupture or erode its cap, the endothelial covering. This is exposes, exposes uh, it to a highly thrombotic thrombogenic material that can activate platelets and coagulation factors, leading to the formation of a thrombus. This is the process that we mentioned earlier known as atherothrombosis. The thrombus can partially or completely obstruct blood flow, causing the myocardial tissue downstream of the block to become ischemic. And then if blood flow is not restored within about 30 minutes, the myocardial tissue will start to die and become necrotic or infarcted. Okay. So again, just to do our recap, remember, here's our healthy, normal coronary artery, okay? You start eating burgers or fries or whatever, you have a bad, you start smoking, you get this um, plaque deposition that occurs within the arterial lumen or arterial lining, okay? And because of that, our lumen starts to narrow, okay? So this area here starts to shrink, and because of that, we get less blood flow. Okay, and eventually with all these lipids and this inflammation that occur within this area, we can have a break in the endothelial, endothelial lining. And because of that, these thrombogenic factors become activated and we get a thrombus that forms. Okay, and that thrombus that forms can then block off this artery and close it off or even make it partially occluded such that when the demand increases we can't get enough supply down here to this tissue and because that tissue is not getting enough oxygen if it goes longer uh, and is not restored within 30 minutes infarction or necrotic tissue of that um, myocardium will occur okay so that's a simple overview of how an acute myocardial infarction comes about now what are the diagnostic criteria for acute mi well there are three main features we can look for in making the diagnosis the first is elevated cardiac troponins which are cardiac enzymes the second is ekg changes okay that are ischemic in nature and the third are symptoms that we see at the patient. The elevated cardiac enzymes represent cells dying and releasing their cellular proteins into peripheral circulation. This can be detected within two to three hours after the onset of myocardial infarction. Cardiac troponin T and troponin I are the biomarkers typically used because of their high sensitivity and specificity for myocardial injury. It's important to be aware that there are several other conditions that can also elevate it troponin levels. Nevertheless, elevated troponin levels are still required to make the diagnosis of acute MI. Now on the EKG, we may see ST segment deviations such as ST elevation or ST depression. We can see T wave changes such as T wave inversion, T wave peaking, or T wave flattening, as well as uh, pathological Q and R waves. We will look at all these EKG features in more detail in future lectures. The last feature is the symptoms, okay? And patients will often have ischemic chest pain or discomfort along with shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, and or unexplained weakness, okay, among uh, many other symptoms. Of these three diagnostic criteria, patients require elevated troponin levels and then need at least one of the others, okay? So they can have EKG changes or symptoms. Oftentimes, these patients will have all three. Okay. Now, lastly, I wanted to mention factors that can influence the size and course in an acute MI. The first is the size of the thrombus. That is the degree of artery obstruction okay the greater the obstruction the more extensive the ischemia and infarction will be the second is the location of the thrombus in the artery in other words a more proximally located thrombus will cut off more blood uh, to a greater number of branches below it or distal to it and therefore affect more myocardium than a distally located thrombus the duration of, of ischemia is also important remember we said once it goes beyond uh, 30 minutes we start to get this infarcted tissue that starts to appear so the longer the duration really makes a difference okay 
So as you can imagine, the greater the time of ischemia present, the more extensive the infarction will be. Now, other factors include collateral circulation, that is coronary arteries that are connected and able to receive blood from one another. This can be effective in reducing the degree of ischemia. Coronary artery anatomy varies among individuals, but in general, the more myocardial tissue supplied by an artery, the greater the ischemic region at risk in the setting of an occlusion. There is something called ischemic preconditioning that may play a ro protective role. This is an area of ongoing research, and we won't get into that, those details here. Now, a few other influencing factors include medications such as beta blockers, which slow the heart rate and reduce contractility and have been shown to reduce myocardial metabolism and hence myocardial ischemia. Statins have been shown also to have a long-term effectiveness in reducing the risk of acute MI, stroke, as well as cardiovascular mortality. And some final influencing factors are those that cause circulatory stress, such as tachycardia, hypotension, anemia, and so forth. These can and exacerbate acute coronary syndrome and potentially lead to even larger infarctions if left untreated. All right, let's quickly review what we discussed before we end here. So acute MI, all right, or acute myocardial infarction, AMI, is the most severe complication of coronary artery disease. This is when perfusion is not restored within 30 minutes of ischemia, and so we get this infarction occurring, okay? So notice we have this occluded coronary artery, okay? And because of that occlusion, if we're not restoring uh, blood flow or oxygen supply to that area, we'll get this ischemia, and then eventually, if it's not there within 30 minutes, we get this infarcted tissue that occurs. And notice everything is distal to that area. Okay, so blood's coming down this way, and everything distal to that region uh, becomes infarcted um, that is supplied by that artery. Now, we mentioned the diagnostic criteria, okay, and we said that we need high or uh, cardiac enzymes or troponins, okay? So that's the, one of the things that's required. And then we need one of these two, okay? One being ischemic EKG changes. And we'll talk about these STT changes as well as the QRS changes uh, in upcoming lectures. And also symptoms, okay? The patient has to have some sort of symptomology such as chest pain, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, weakness, among others, okay? But remember, you need at least this high cardiac enzymes present, okay? Now, we mentioned a number of factors that can influence the size and course, thrombus size, the location, is it proximal or distal, okay? As you can imagine, something's more proximal, you're going to affect all this region, okay? Compared to something that's more distal, it may be just this region here. The duration of ischemia, the longer, the greater the extent of injury. Collateral circulation can be a protective mechanism. Coronary artery anatomy varies among individuals. Ischemic preconditioning, cardio uh, protective mechanism, we mentioned beta blockers and statins, okay? And then circulatory stress, such as tachycardia, hypotension, and anemia, uh, if left untreated, can actually exacerbate uh, the condition here. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discuss acute myocardial infarction, including its pathophysiology, diagnostic criteria, and factors that can influence its size and course. I hope you learned something.